Hello, sleuths and suckers. My name is Devious Guy, and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV, where we are still making our way through the uh, post-ARR content. Specifically, we've been running around with a big himbo idiot detective and his adorable little bimbo assistant, and having a tremendously good time doing that. So I feel like let's just talk to Ellie and keep the train rolling. Brick, I was wondering when you'd show up. I've got the latest scoop on the victor's spoils that our many-faced friend has set his sights on. Have you visited the Colosseum of late? There's a tourney in the works, and it's looking to be a big one. The Mithril Cup, sponsored by none other than Am Amagina Sons and, and Sons Mineral Concern. They say Master Firigis will be furnishing the prizes himself from his personal collection. Small wonder it's captured the attention of Mr. Sticky Fingers. You are familiar with the concern, yes? It's only the largest mining interest in the Sultanate, after all. Oh, well, they sound like great people. The chairman, Master Fergus, sits on the syndicate and possesses such wealth that rumor has it he could buy half the realm if he chose to. Or end poverty. He could do that. He could end poverty and hunger. He could just do it if he wanted to. But he doesn't because he's an asshole because rich people are assholes. He's also renowned for being something of a martial arts enthusiast. With his position affording him little opportunity to test his own skills, he settles for living vicariously through the exploits of others. Hence his sponsorship of tournaments like the Mithril Cup. My colleague Ganelon is an old dog covering the tourney as we speak. If we were to track him down, I bet he'd be able to give us something to get our investigation started. To Ulda! Eight armed and day. Oh, right! I remember that from the thing of the of the outro with the previous thing for the last time. Ultras! Ultras is going to be showing up. It's my boy! It's my, <laughs> it's my little idiot useless moron uh, octopus boy. What's this quest? There it is. Hello, Ganon. Oh, they're wearing a uniform. Okay, cool. Yes, I'm a busy man. If you're looking for small talk, I suggest you look elsewhere. No need to be rude, Ganelon. He's a friend of mine. Now, what say you share your latest findings with us? I promise I'll make it worth your while. Uh, Ellie. Huh. Well, if it isn't the Mithrilized Star Reporter, come to have a glance at Ganelon's expense before returning to pen your latest front page feature, eh? Ah, uh, I'll worry very well. Just promise you'll put in a good word for me with the higher-ups, okay? Now, let me tell you this. There's strange things afoot at the Colosseum. Bugger all, it's a travesty, I tell you. Don't know who's talking, but we'll make up a voice for them momentarily. Oh, oh, I like these guys already. <laughs> Hutch, you and Hema, whatever's the matter. And where, pray tell, is Hutchin? The four of you will compete in the cup together, yes? I fear that an unfortunate mishap has left Hutchin in no condition to fight. We were just on our way to convey the dire news to Diam Dower Meadow. Mishap, my arse! This was sabotage! Some bloody coward out there was stopped with nothing to eliminate his competition! I swear it on my subligar! Yeah. Don't know who's talking. Is that gonna be our boy? Lower your voice, Hotch. My he head stings enough without your bloody shouting. Oh, no. There he is. <laughs> Hutchin! Shouldn't you not be resting your wounds? Oh, but forget my... <laughs> your incompetent, a worthy comrade. If I'd been quicker with my mantra, we would still be four men strong. Do not berate yourself so, Hamo. In victory and defeat, the mantra wills fight as once, as one. You bear no more responsibility for my wounds than I. The mantra wills? The mantra wills. And they wear slightly too little clothes. Okay. Mm, okay. Any road. Dare say I'll not be getting back into fighting Fettel by arsing about in bed. I'm ready to chant some mantras. How about the lot of you? Uh. Hutchins, for you, I'm always ready. Now that's what I like to hear. A thousand mantras, and I want each one to ring out over the Sagoli. Huh, okay, interesting, actually. Taking a look at them, um... We didn't get to see, see them quite as much, but they actually all do have different faces. Like, there, there's clearly some thought that's gone into making them... Making the thing that unites them their costuming, the fact that they all dress exactly the same and have the same hairdo with different colors, but they do have different facial constructions. That's interesting. The Mantravilles? 
Ah, as Hutchins tell us, they took their name from a training partner they met at the Fist of Ralga, a man they most admired for his devotion, Chisel for Seek. God damn it, it's him again! <laughs> Chisel for Seek. Uh, consider me not the least bit interested. This talk of attacks on competitors, however, of this I would hear more. Ah, uh, yes. I mentioned that strange things were afoot, yes? With mere days left before the Mithril Cup, a staggering number of would-be combatants have withdrawn, citing a host of curious ailments and injuries. With the list of entrants shrinking by the day, the organizers have been forced to abandon the elimination format in favor of a mass melee between what few battlers remain. The Phantom Thieves' challenge? Gladiators dropping like flies? No, this is not mere coincidence. I would speak to the individual in charge of the event. Where might I find him? Uh, though the concern sponsors the tourney, the day-to-day -day organizational duties are being handled by a fellow by the name of Dower Meadow. He should be in his office within the Coliseum Halls. I'll send word to the gateman, you buy. Yuyubaya. He owes the myth lie a favor or two. Splendid. Come, Brick. We've got a case to crack. Love the suit, dude. I'm Ellie, reporter from the Mithril Eye, never blinking, all seeing, you know the deal, yes? And you must be Dower Meadow. I was hoping we could ask you a few questions about the upcoming tourney. Oh, now there's a character design, isn't there? I like that. Good look. Like with the eye shadow and the eye patch and the scar. Like you kind of get the sense of someone who has definitely been in a fight or two, but... They've suited up and got a little glamorous. Like, they've yassified a little bit for the purposes of, of doing promotion. That's a that's pretty good NPC character design. <laughs> Who am I to argue with free publicity? And from a charming little thing like yourself. Ask away, me girl. Uh, that said, between the challenge for that so-called phantom thief and now these bizarre attacks targeting the fighters, our attorney's already the talk of the town. <laughs> Not that you'll see me complaining, provided someone's still left to fight, that is. Yeah, free to investigate as you wish, but you'd be smart to exercise some caution. Needless to say, recent events have everyone here a bit on edge. Why, well, just moments ago, one fighter almost took off another's head for insulting the color of his sublet. Yeah, looks like we got ourselves another, huh? Well, these two aren't in the entry books. There he is! <laughs> There's our boy! And our girl, and our other dumber boy. <laughs> <laughs> ah, lovely. And our challenger unleashes a vicious right hook as the gentleman inspector was channeling his strength for his next attack. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner! I inspector Briadine, efficient as ever, I see. The true gentleman <coughs> shows violence, inspector. You were thinking. It annoyed me. Dow Meadow, I presume. Tell me everything you can about the prizes for this tournament, and try to be brief. I was wondering when you might ask. Master Fiergis has spared no expense in making the Mithril Cup the most lucrative tourney this Coliseum's ever seen. The victor will receive a true treasure from his collection, the Warden's Grace. A ring fitted with the largest sun sphere you'll find outside a card. The second and third place prices are nothing to sneeze at neither, but uh, I don't care how many faces he's got, we've got nothing to fear from this thief. The concern is I had an elite regiment of stone torches to watch over the vault day and night. <laughs> yes, just as the brass blades were so successful in stopping the thief last time. If you want your treasures safe, go fetch them and bring them to me. And be quick about it, I haven't got all day. Fear can't do that, Inspector. After all, what proof do you have? I, do I have you ain't missed the many faces in one of his elaborate get-ups? No, if you want to get your hands on the spoils, you have to claim them as any other would. In battle. As a matter of fact, what with the ranks thin as they are, we're actively recruiting new competitors. Yeah, the more the merrier, and the more lucrative at that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah.
Now, where did our receptionist get off to? Oh, there, you slimy bugger. We got- Oh, yes. We got some fresh blood for the melee. Give me a moment, will ya? I've only got eight arms. Oh, where are they legs? There's our boy! Young old, I was just about to give the lovely Miss Avila the grand tour. <laughs> Inspector Hildebrandt, look, he's purple. As students of an ashu, this color, this overabundance of appendages, I smell a case. Ah, eh, that's just my receptionist old trust. Don't be startled now. He's an ugly little bugger, but he's friendly enough. Uh, word has it he was one of the many bizarre creatures born from a recent experiment with ancient incantations of the Thaumaturgist Guild. They were gonna seal him away in the hole in the desert with the others when he opened the slopper in the mouth and started pleading for his life. I just want to live in peace. I'll do anything, anything. So the management hired him to perform odd jobs at the Coliseum. So, oh my god, there's my boy. Look at him, he's so pretty. He's so awful and ugly and disgusting and pretty. Uh, <laughs> so, for those who don't know, Ultros originates in Final Fantasy VI, where he was a recurring enemy. The party first encounters him as like a comedy mid-boss who shows up while you're riding a raft down a river, and he has like a thing for using his tentacles to, to, to touch ladies. Uh, he, he does that. He, he, he does like to do that. Uh... That's kind of the joke about him is that, but he's also a complete fucking idiot. Like just, like it's not even that he's necessarily especially perverted as such, he's just stupid. Like he's just a complete moron uh, from top to bottom. And then he shows up sort of recurringly again and again over the course of the game, kind of hunting the party because he's upset that they keep beating him. He shows up at the Opera House. He shows up at the Coliseum in Final Fantasy VI as well, which is presumably what this is a reference to is that he ends up in Final Fantasy VI being a receptionist at the Coliseum. And like you can fight him and things like that. But like, yeah, he's he's a he's a tentacle joke. Uh, but he's also an idiot, and I love his character design. Because he just he does look stupid, right? Like you you get the sense from him just by seeing him that this guy is a complete fucking moron, right? Like this guy is just head empty, no thoughts, I am a tentacle monster kind of guy. With like his his upper row of teeth that just kind of sits there like a huge overbite, and like the half-lidded eyes that aren't quite looking in the right in this in the same direction like he's just yeah dumb idiot moron uh <laughs> it's lovely and I, I'm, sh I'm so happy to see him it's nice that they bring things back like this and i am glad they did i tell you this job ain't glamorous but it sure has its perks what a delicious morsel i want to get my tentacles around her yeah, like I said, there it is. <laughs> That's Ultros. Can't say I blame him. That is a good look. Nope, nope, nope. I, I do blame him. <laughs> Kick his ass. Huh. I know not who you are, where you, you hail from, and I do not care. If you dare challenge me, my Tempest Blade will show you no mercy. You can forget about your case, Inspector. There's only one who will claim the victory's spoils, and that is me. Maybe he's into getting his, his ass kicked, too. That is implied. Yes, it's implied that he has, like, a thing for that. Yeah, which shows... Oh, I just love it when she talks tough. <laughs> now, who's a chump who wanted to get a pummeling by my lovely little Avi? <laughs> Gentlemen takes far more pride in rescuing fair damsels than fighting them. I fear we have little recourse. I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, Inspector Extraordinaire, shall do what must be done to... Break off them. I'll be entering the tournament on my behalf. <laughs> Owned. Break off them? Oh, you do look like an Ulfum. Well, bugger me with a spear. To think I'd see the day when the warrior light stood in my coliseum. Oh shit, he knows who I am. Hear that clink clink clinking? <laughs> it's the sound the gill pouring into our coffers when the public finds out that a true Eorzean hero will be stepping into the ring to fight for the Mithril Cup. Oh, and I reckon your friend can tag along too. Show him where to sign up, Balti. Mm. 
With Brick, I suppose we have a good a chance as any. Now we just need to make sure that he doesn't come down with a curious injury. Again, I have killed gods. But okay, sure. That gladiatrix, Avila, was it? Seemed quite certain of our chances at the victory. Suspiciously certain, I'd say. <laughs> I'm away, ready ten steps ahead of you, Inspector. That Ultras fellow seemed most knowledgeable about Miss Avila. Come, Nacho, the investigation is afoot. As much as that sounds like an amazingly productive line of investigation, might I suggest that our first priority is to keep Brick here safe? Let us return to Ganelon and see what else he can tell us of these mysterious attacks on our combatants. Very well. I shall leave that task to you. I have a lead of my own to investigate. Should you uncover any new information, I trust you will share it with me at the first opportunity. Still can't decide if I want Briardine to have, like, a British accent or not. It sort of seems tempting because he's the Sherlock character, right? But on the other hand, it also is a little bit too obvious. Plus, I feel like the upper-class twit accent I've got going on for Hildebrand is, is a little bit more fun without the contrast or without the similarity. Anyway, where am I going? Yeah, as people are pointing out in chat, the animations here are way better than the main quest, but not just the animations, like just the filmmaking, like the, the actual, like the use of framing, the use of cuts, the use of edits to sort of punctuate the emotional points of the scene. It's just way better than it is in the main quest. Like, like, just like I know it's silly and it's comedy and everyone's like goofing around and doing dumb faces and stuff, but it's also just like better directed, frankly, than the main quest was. Briardine is from Ishgard, so he'd be French, actually. Oh, you're telling me I could have played him as French this entire time? I could have given him a dumb French accent. Oh, oui, oui. <laughs> uh, I won't do that. <laughs> Tempted, but I won't. You again. I already told you. What? End of the turn, you say? Oh, yeah, do you bleed in mind? Look, I've got a suspicion of two which I'm happy to share with you, but in the end, you have to protect yourself, you hear? So I've been asking around, and it seems the more than a few of the fighters who pulled out of the tourney were scheduled to fight a warrior S by the name of... It's Ultras, isn't it? It's Ultras. Ultras is injuring them. He's doing it. Oh, God damn it! Now, I can't make any promises, but my instincts tell me this girl is bad news. But don't take it from me when you can hear from someone who crossed blades with her just days ago. Fella by the name of Raging Rat had the misfortune of being matched up with Avila in the preliminary round and earned himself a right bruising from it all. Last I heard, he was resting up at the back of the Pugilist's Guild. Why don't you pay him a visit? Okay. Have to s cut out a good laugh at old Raging Rat's expense, have you? Well, you're not the first. I say, is there not a man in this entire realm with an ounce of sympathy? Greetings, good sir. How fortunate you are today that your guest is Hildebrand Mandeville, gentleman and inspector. Now, if you would, please enlighten me as to how it was you were beaten to a bloody pulp by Ms. Avila. Gentlemen, my eyes! Have you not a wit of delicacy? Eh, never you mind. Look, the records may say I lost, but I'll admit to nothing of the sort. I'll shout at the top of my lungs if no one else will. That girl doesn't fight fair! Tempest Blade? Some kind of foul sorcery, if you ask me. Mark my words, that girl is up to no good. If she weren't so damned easy on the eyes, she'd be rotting in jail as we speak. The girl's Alamegan, or haven't you heard? You know how it is with those refugees. Why fight with honor when you go, okay, he's racist, great. When you got nothing to look, well, maybe not racist, but bigoted anyway. Classist, probably. Yes, and why not disparage an entire people in a pathetic attempt to salvage your sorry pride? This one's a real piece of work, Brick. Let's be on our way. Well, I didn't mean no offense, miss. Just telling it like it is, as it were. Yeah, they always are, aren't they? Like, they're always just telling it how it is. They're, like, every time there's someone says something horrible about people for no good goddamn reason. I'm just telling the truth. I'm just saying what everyone's thinking. Every time. It's weird. It's funny how that works. Perhaps it truly is some men or sorcery, as the fellow says. Or perhaps she works with an accomplice? Yeah, she didn't strike me as the magic-wielding type. If I were a betting woman, I'd put my gill on the ladder. Ah, Miss Ellie, the thrill of the chase has struck a chord with you as well. Yes, I can see it in the wrinkles beneath your eyes. We might very well make an inspectress of you yet. I'll give you a good wrinkle, you insensitive boy. 
If what the man says is true, it's likely that her fellow Elamigans might sympathize with her plight. An accomplice would hardly be out of her out of the question. Yes, I can see it now. Two unfortunate souls shunned by those around them, united by destiny and a common desire for justice. Ample opinions whirling wildly, sending gusts of wind flying every which way. Avila and Alti, a match made in the heavens. Who is your big furry friend here? Gaijin Poggers. Hey, Sky, who's your big furry friend here, Gaijin Poggers? Uh, my big furry friend here is. I assume you're talking about this guy here. This is Brick. This is my Final Fantasy XIV character, uh, who I've who I've been leveling. Were it any more obvious, I would have solved this case without leaving my home. Incredible! Your powers of deduction never failed to amaze, Inspector. What is it with you two and that infernal octopus? Mr. Ultra should still be at the Colosseum. Let us hurry before he slithers back off whensoever he can. Okay, it's kind of nice to see that they do bring back the theme of Ulda here, which is that, like, the th as we discussed many times before, Ulda is the super wealthy rich people town that's full of rich people who have lots of money and just absolute fucking tons of cash coming out of their ass and every orifice in their body. And also, it's full of poor people who are suffering and, like, starving in the streets and refugees who can't find a place to live or any food to eat. Even though there is enough money... To feed them all, they're like there's there's plenty of it. It just doesn't seem like the people who have it want to use it to you know alleviate suffering in the world. What a weird fantasy world! Like it's 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 such a it's such a weird alien concept. I don't know. Like I I don't know how to relate to that really. I don't know. I just I just don't feel like it's very realistic, you know. Which I guess is why it's a fantasy world. Is because because like that's that stuff just doesn't happen in real life, you know. I see chat are. Oh boy, discussing the serious issues. The Mandevilles are actually Alamegans, as is Raban. So it's kind of ironic that Ro was mouthing Alamegan refugees in front of actual Alamegan refugees. Yeah, I mean, it's... That's kind of the thing, isn't it? Like, that's that's always the hypocrisy at, at, at the core of that kind of thing. There's a line in, um... When was it? The Hunchback of Notre Dame, not the Disney version, but like the 1940-something? Yeah, 1942 or something. Um, there's a version of that movie that was made way before Disney's version. Disney cribs a lot from that one. But when the Romani arrive at Paris and are turned away at the gates, the guy on the horse cart, like the, 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 the leader of the Romani has a great line. It's like, like um, we're foreigners, huh? You came yesterday, we come today. Like, because that's the difference between someone who's like, oh, immigrants and refugees, and someone who's like, as native is like, it's, it, there's no actual difference. It's just when did you show up? Like, when did you arrive? And it's, it's, a, it's dumb and arbitrary. Anyway, let's talk to Hildebrand. Let's, let's move this quest along. Shh, friend, and look over yonder. Behold those exquisite, exquisite legs, those stylish tentacles, the unearthly undulations of his squirmy, squishy body. Yes, our friend Ulti is the most fascinating creature indeed. Behold how he carefully eyes the gladiatrix before him. What manner of mischief is he plotting? Nothing I can show on screen, stream without getting demonetized, I'm sure. He speaks? Yes, this is most suspicious indeed. <laughs> Oh, uh -huh. what is this? The girl has fled in a panic. Our friend Alti appears to be discouraged. Look at the way his shoulders sag. Uh, how they would sag if he had shoulders. Oh, the noises. Our quarry is on the move. Quickly, Nasha, we must pursue.
Gaia's did nothing wrong and Redacted was right or worse. I assume Redacted is something in the future. Yeah, I've already had some comments on the videos on YouTube of people saying, oh, well, you know, in the future, you're going to find out that Gaia's was like, maybe not such a bad guy after. Like, like no, 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 no. You, you weren't playing the same game I was there, buddy. Like, there's no... Maybe we'll find out that he had, like, understandable, comprehensible motives, but that doesn't mean he was any less wrong. He was wrong. He's a fascist. Like, maybe he thought he was doing the right thing in good faith. That's cool. Still a fascist. Mr. Alti seems to have found himself another gladiatrix. What might he be plotting this time? The same thing he was plotting last time. He just wants a hug. An awful, awful hug. Look at those succulent legs. Oh, I reckon they taste just wonderful in a good marinara sauce. Hmm, marinara sauce. Oh, he speaks. And another girl rushes off. Whatever did he say to her? Uh, you can guess, can't you? He looks so sad. Shall we douse him in lemon butter and put it on his misery inspector? Whatever is he doing with those girls anyway? Call me crazy, but I think he likes them. Hildebrand is contemplating the implications of Ultras' behavior. Don't contemplate the implications of his behavior. You shouldn't. Um, you should never contemplate the implications. The implications are bad. Oh, misunderstood Alti. Here we suspected him of criminal activity, when in truth he was just a gentle soul, luckless in love. No, no, he's not. Oh, Alti, can you find it in your squishy, slimy heart to forgive us? Hildebrand, you himbo idiot, I love you, but my god. Yes, yes. Now perhaps we should return to our investigation. If Avila is as suspicious as they say, perhaps we should follow her around for a bit. Dower Meadow back at the Coliseum should be able to enlighten us as to her whereabouts. An excellent idea, Miss Ellie, but I have a better one. Let us return to the Colosseum and speak with Dower Meadow. From him, we shall ascertain Miss Avila's whereabouts, upon which we shall follow her about to see if she is indeed as suspicious as they say. Come, Nasho, the investigation calls. <laughs> oh, don't think Uncle Alti didn't see you following me. What's the big idea, hmm? I'm no more than a stupid octopus! <laughs> or am I? Oh, come on now. I just want what any octopus wants. A cute girl, untold riches, and the admiration of millions! Can't Uncle Alti dream? Well, kids, hate to ink and run. Then again, I am an octopus. That's a line directly from Final Fantasy VI. The first time you fight him, when you beat him, he just runs away. Yeah, what is it this time? I'm a busy man. Looking for Avila, you say? Uh, she said something about sharing a flagon with a countryman over the coffer and coffin. I reckon you might still find it there. I'll warn you though, if you're smart, you keep your distance from that one. That poor bugger Ganelon tried to interview her for an article, thought the girl was gonna rip his head clean off. How can I put this, uh, she doesn't seem to take kind of to being asked questions of a personal nature, if you catch my drift. A lot of people don't, maybe that's not suspicious. <clears throat> that said, if you're just looking for a good sparring match to warm you up for the tourney, <laughs> that might be just the ticket. <laughs> I can assure you, there will be no need for gratuitous fisticuffs, my good sir. With my remarkable powers of espionage, we will ascertain all the information we need without the fiery lies even being alerted to our presence. Let us be off! Am I going out again? Oh, we're go- okay, all the way up to Blackbrush. Behold, the lovely Miss Avila, just as predicted. Let us keep watch from here so as not to set off the girl's famed temper. How many times must I tell you? There's no cause for concern, the spoils shall be mine. May as well be written stone. 
Do you realize what this means? We have suffered and suffered long, but my victory shall mark a new era. Just as Raban Adelin will want a new life for himself in the Colosseum, I shall win a new life for our people. The prize that I shall claim will boast of the wealth of our people a thousand, no, ten thousand fold. In a land where wealth is power, we will be kicked to the gutter by the Uldans no longer. And with that, I must be off to the Nanawa mines to meet my sister. Miss Avila, so for sure, is this ever a sight to behold. I deduce that my own chances of felling her in the battlefield are infinitesimal. I could have told you that before you signed up. Come now, we have a suspect to pursue. <laughs> uh, trying to steal a vila from Uncle Alti's tentacles, are you? I'm afraid that isn't gonna happen! Yes, Uncle Alti's homemade explosive will see that this is the end of the road for you! <laughs> Does that make me a bad octopus? Ah, the distinctive smell of fire sand. Another one of your handcrafted explosives, I take it, Nashu. Heavens no, Inspector. This is far too elaborate to be one of mine. Do you think whoever crafted this would be willing to give me a lesson? They are to me? Oh, preposterous! Could it be that muscle head isn't as stupid as he looks? No. I say, well, in any event, I shudder to think what might happen if an unsuspecting passerby had chanced upon such a hazardous object. Allow me! He. her. You gotta be kidding me! <laughs> yep, that's Ultras. That maiden in mining guard must be the sister of whom they said you spoke. Let us listen a bit closer. I thought we agreed. No la hard labor until your leg is healed. I swear, sometimes I think you were only born solely to give your poor sister headaches. Says the girl who once fought off ten Imperials with one good arm. Perhaps someday you will understand that your little sister can take care of herself just as well as you. Speaking of which, what news of the tourney? Worry not, Helgalina. I've taken all the necessary precautions. The Warden's grace is as good as ours. Even the most modest estimates value its worth at some 30 million gil. Do you realize what this means? Necklaces from Ishtames, sun silk dresses, all the luxuries you've ever wanted will be yours. The poor little girl in shabby clothes, objects of pity and scorn for the old Don upper crust, those days are over. After I claim victory, we will take our rightful place at the top of society. I don't know, Avi. Wealth is all well and good, but... When I see you stand tall in the Colosseum, hundreds and thousands cheering your name, I'm proud. No matter how humble our birth, we stand strong and stand together. This alone is all the wealth I ask for. Yeah, but also you should have some money for food and stuff, you know? Like, like being proud is good. That's good. But also you should... You should not live in poverty, because that's... That's... That's bad. It, it's evil actually to, to have people living in po so you should you should also have money on top of that this is your problem Helgelina you've always been too quick to settle for less than you're worth but worry not for your sisters watching over you I will do this for us now I must return gods forbid one of those prying reporters overhear us that's my Abby unfaced by a duel to the death yet terrified to be caught in a moment of tenderness oh that line fucking cuts deep <laughs> May the gods smile on you, sister, and be safe. <laughs> a more moving display of sisterly love I have not seen. <laughs> and yet I fear this afforded us little in the way of prospective clues. It would seem Avila's obsession with victory runs even deeper than we imagined. That said, I can't help but feel a bond with the girl. My sister and I were alone in the world too, you see. Inspector, did you just hear what I heard? Look, kids, Uncle Alti has had it up to here with you. Do you think you could just fall in this pit and die like a good little boy? <laughs> I like the bandage. <laughs> a 
I'm talking to you, Mr. Warrior of Light. Hear that sound? Just one step closer. Closer. <laughs> of course it's not you, you idiot. Um, no need for concern, friends. I've simply taken the liberty of investigating this hole in the ground, and I'm pleased to report that there seems to be nothing out of the ordinary. Ah, uh, hero. Now, shall we return to Ulda? The Mithril Cup will be starting before long, and the last pl thing we want after all is to, is to lose our bout by forfeit. Could it be? Did that musclehead dive straight into my trap to save his companions? The others seem completely unsurprised at this turn of events. Doubtless he has performed such selfless -like act acts before. A true gentleman, if ever I saw one! But if you think that means I'm gonna show mercy on you, you've got another thing coming! Time to break out the big guns, kids! Uh, wait a minute. I dug two pits, didn't I? Come to think of it, the second one was right around... Give me a break! Ultras is doing some Team Rocket shit. Yes. Yes, he is. <laughs> That is very much the vibe of Ultras. Britain, villain, I mean, it's the same thing, male jade, isn't it? <laughs> you say potato, I say potato. Yes, is something the matter? We're in something of a tight schedule here, Inspector. Stand back, Miss Ellie. My well-known inspector's senses are tingling. I feel a most fearsome adversary lurking about. <laughs> this time, you're really up the creek without a paddle, kids. <laughs> Say hello to a not-so-little friend of mine from the Coliseum! He's large, he's in charge, and most of all, he's hungry! <laughs> Where in the world is he? I haven't got all day! Yeah! <laughs> There he is. Ah. Uh. Shit, what voice did I give him? I can't remember. M M my Chimera! Who was that half naked fool? Father, could it be the order of unmitigated murderer's rage that I felt was not our quarry but you? I was merely taking a stroll in search of inspiration and materials for my nearest masterpiece in the making. What bring you and your friends to these parts today? I should probably make his voice deeper. <laughs> oh, just a bit of sleuth work, father dear. And with that, we must return to Uldar. If you have not heard, your son is set to compete for the Mithril Cup. Oh, Moonlight is a gladiator, are we? A fitting second career for a Mandeville man, if I say so myself. That muscle-bound old man is the inspector's father! Oh, remind me never to go to any of their family reunions. Ugh, well just waste this inspector anyway. Hmm. Hildy is a worthy rival, if ever there were one. Oh, who goes there? Oh, God, it's Greg. Oh, lovely. Hildy, Brick, <laughs> I've been waiting for this day. He's back. It's our boy. 
Well, look at who we have here. You're quite the intimidating gent yourself. Uh, friend of the inspector, mayhap. I'm Gilgamesh, wandering duelist. And I'm not so much the inspector's friend as, uh, his enemy. Well, that makes two of us perk up, Gulliver, because this might be just a lucky day. Uh, is there no one in this accursed realm who can remember my... Yeah, call me what you will, friend, but heed my words. Brick is a formidable foe. Huh, that sounded like high praise coming from a fella like yourself. To have such a powerhouse as his sidekick, that inspector must be something else indeed. Ah, no, not what brings you to do battle with those two, but I warn you. You will end up a seafood soup if you face them alone. And with that, I must be off. For reasons I do not entirely understand, I'm considered something of a fugitive in these parts. Come to the Colosseum. Come on! Come on, Gil! Brick, I'll not fall so easily this time. Uh, well, it looks like I've got my legs full. All eight of them! But if that adventure is too strong to take all alone... <laughs> I'll just have to bring along a friend! <laughs> A subtly twisting ring calling to mind the undulations of the creature of the sea. Yes! Inspiration has struck! Look forward to your next life as a masterpiece, fiend. Muscle <laughs> 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 heads, I hate them! Again, like, just the filmmaking is so much better. Like, the framing, the timing, the use of cuts. Oh, it's just so much better. Good heavens! Charging up on father like that. I dare say it's taken a year off my life. Quite a crowd has assembled. It would seem the festivities are nigh about to commence. I'd hoped to uncover more of Miss Avila's secrets, but no matter. What better place to continue my investigation than in the field of battle? Hello. Good heavens, we haven't much time before the tourney begins. We must hasten back to the Colosseum and reprise ourselves on the rules of engagement. To a true gentleman, a battle is not about victory or defeat, but fighting with honor. Whatever treachery or guile my opponents must may employ, I must not, I will not, lower myself to their level. I sense a funny cutscene. Ah, uh, bumps on the head, chip teeth, uh, one shabby looking octopus. I tell you, they don't pay me enough for this. They don't pay you at all to go around trying to attack other competitors. Well, that's all gonna change soon, isn't it, buddy? Ah, Mr. Ultras, just the octopus we were looking for. I was hoping that you might enlighten us just to... You gods, who gave you those ghastly bruises? Bruises? I fell down the stairs, that's all. Now get lost, I'm a busy octopus. Ouch. Oh, well, you have my sympathies, good sir. Is it challenge enough to co it is challenge enough to coordinate four limbs, let alone eight, hmm? 
Is there someone inside your office? Uh, no, what if I give you that idea? Uh, I'm simply uh, uh, fumigating the place for pests, pests like yourself. Now, don't you have a battle to go fight? <laughs> Inspector, I think something's alive in there. That's uh, that's just me talking to to <laughs> talking to myself. Fun, uh, <laughs> gods. Yes, gods. Working as a receptionist is fun. Battered, bruised, beset by vermin, and still able to find joy and fulfillment in your work? I say, Mr. Allfrost, your passion for your chosen profession is truly an inspiration to us all. <laughs> there he is. Brick, if you would come with me for a moment. I fear the stupidity in the air may be contagious. Hildebrand would make friends with him, wouldn't he? Uh, oh, hey, Hypatia. Well, has your investigation borne any fruit? I see. Avila claims seeks to win the tourney to claim a fortune and raise her sister out of poverty. Furthermore, she has implied that she has taken the necessary precautions to ensure that her victory is all but certain. While trailing her, you narrowly avoided a series of dastardly obstacles, and upon your return, that strange octopus appeared considerably worse for the wear. All evidence points in one direction. The Alamegan girl and Ultras are plotting together to claim the Mithril Cup and its lucrative prize. Or maybe just... My god, Briardine. Jesus. <laughs> it's not as preposterous as it sounds. I've done some research on our eight-legged friend. It would appear that Ultras has become something of a regular at Uldar's taverns, and, uh... Houses of play. Okay. Houses of play. Well, I mean, my guy supporting sex workers. Uh, that's admirable, frankly. <laughs> no problem with that. So long as, you know, so long as he behaves. I suspect that he's using his inside knowledge of the workings of the Colosseum to identify and eliminate potential threats, thereby ensuring victory for Avila and earning himself a healthy commission. There's also- oh, shit, fuck, no! Didn't mean to do that, I clicked on accident. Damn it! Can you go back and- Yes, I can, haha! Uh, there's also the matter of the Tempest Blade that is rumored to be the source of the Alamegan girl's strength. That remains a mystery, which means that I fear your life is still in danger, Brick. One of the guards informed me that several crates of refuse from the Colosseum reception room were hastily discarded in Pearl Lane not bells ago. It is a stab in the dark, but the contents may yet provide some answers. I would ask you to bring them to me. Okay. I'm gonna go steal trash from an alley. <laughs> Houses of pleasure, you mean the housing market on roleplay servers? Yeah, I've heard about that. There's a lot of ERP in Final Fantasy XIV, which is not surprising given the way that these characters are designed, to be honest. Oh yeah, ERP is erotic role playing. Um, basically, people doing cyber sex in character as their as their uh, game characters, which is like it's one of those things that I have I've kind of had an ambition. I've kind of wanted to do a video about like ERP as it relates to MMOs because like it it was such a huge thing in World of Warcraft. Still is like there's a huge community of that in World of Warcraft, there's a huge community in that, like most MMOs, and certainly in Final Fantasy XIV, and it's like, I I really am genuinely curious to like the ways that people design characters for that particular purpose, like the way that, like how do you go about getting the gear that you need for the look that you want to play, like a, a, a sexual character, ra a, a role-playing sexual character, rather than, you know, a cool badass adventuring. Like, I'd be curious to do that, but it's also the kind of thing that like, Absolutely no way in hell am I going to be able to put that video on YouTube. <laughs> like, no way in hell am I going to be able to put that video on YouTube.com. I, I kind of, it's it's one of those things, like, I have been wanting to explore, because it's a huge part of character design, is, like, the ways that we use character design for eroticism. For various, like, I had, I had an ambition a few years ago. I wanted to interview... Like, some of my, like, I have a bunch of friends who are artists, and, like, a lot of them do, like, pornographic commissions for people. Like, they, they do, they do, like, that kind of, of, uh, of sex work. 
which is what it is. Like they draw porn commissions, like especially for furries and stuff. And I, I wanted to talk about that. Like I wanted to talk about like, how do you design a character for the purposes of this? Like where, like these things. But again, it was the thing of like, there's just no way in hell, because I can't show anything on screen. Like there, I can't, I can't put any of those characters on screen because my entire channel is going to get taken down. Um, so like, it's one of those things that I really do want to be able to make a video about, but it's just, I just can't on the platform. And I had the, I had the vague thought that, hey, what if I did like a really heavily censored version for the channel? And then I put the uncensored version on like Pornhub or something, but it's still like, it's just, that's still really risky because YouTube can delete your channel just for reference, like just for saying go to Pornhub is actually a violation of YouTube terms of service. Um. So, like, I couldn't even say that, hey, there is another that you can go to the porn site to find. Like, can't do it. Uh, could it exist safely on Patreon? Yeah, even that is kind of difficult, actually, Al Olivier, because Patreon also has some really shitty rules about sexual content. And that's because Patreon um, and PayPal and, like, all of these payment processors, they're beholden to the credit card companies. And if the credit card companies say, you make content that we don't agree with, so we're not going to process payments for you anymore, a company like Patreon will just crash. Like, it will just go bankrupt. It's the same reason OnlyFans did what they did, right? Like, you remember when OnlyFans were saying, like, they were going to ban porn on their platform? Which everyone was like, why the fuck would OnlyFans do this? Well, it's because OnlyFans depends on the payment processors. And the payment processors are always going to be wary of them. Like they're not going to, they they won't be able to get loans from banks. They're not going to be able to get services from uh, things like MasterCard and Visa uh, if they traffic in pornographic content, which is like their whole entire goddamn business. And so what they wanted to do was they wanted to pivot away from that and become a Patreon. Like they wanted to become like, oh, we're not a, we're not for porn. No, we're for people who do fun, creative, safe for work projects that are advertiser friendly because they wanted to expand the platform. Like they wanted to get more venture capital funding. They wanted to do all that. And they couldn't do that because so long as there's porn, absolutely, like, yeah. If PayPal discovers you're getting paid for sex work, they'll steal your money. Yep, that too. Um, PayPal has, uh, has parts of their terms of service that allow them to simply, if, if they discover that you've been paid for either sex work, like actual in physical sex work, or even if you've been doing porn commissions, like if you've just been drawing pictures that are pornographic in nature, they, like, they can also just take your money, just steal it from you, uh, because that's in their terms of service that you agreed to when you signed up for the platform. And it is applied completely like, completely arbitrarily. Like, their rules enforcement is garbage. It's... Yeah. So, like, it's a whole thing. Like, there's a whole... There's a whole... Puritan streak... On the internet... That fucks with... With doing any kind of content about... Um... Sex or sex work. And it kind of sucks. It sucks. <laughs> Platforms are always built on the backs of sex workers... Who they're willing to profit off of... Until they want more money and then they fuck them. Yeah. And that's, like, Patreon has done this, uh, PayPal has done this, like, sites do this all the time. OnlyFans tried, but then didn't get anywhere because no one uses OnlyFans for anything other than porn. So, yeah. <sighs> what the hell? <laughs> where, where did all these people come from? <laughs> Okay, hi. I, I think we, we just organized a sit-in here. Uh, oh, cool. Nice suit. You're the Mika with the name Soul Spear. Uh, Soul Spear, Soul Spear. Yatsune, Wandering Vanguard, Raftalia. Oh, there you are. Oh, yeah, I can see how that would work. Definitely. And I can also see how Hypatia Storm's outfit would work. That is... That's some good fashion right there. It's ironic, you know, I waited, I, I I had a meal, and I was like, okay, my stomach, like, it's been a little upset -y these past couple of days. I was like, I'm just gonna wait a couple of hours, have a meal, wait a couple of hours, see if my stomach is okay. Everything was fine, and then the moment I start streaming, obviously, obviously it kicks in. Why wouldn't it? Damn, there's a whole... Okay, hang on, let's just have a, let's just have a look around here. 
man, there's some good fashion in Final Fantasy XIV. It, you can do some cool shit. I hope not too much of it is pay-gated. And it is funny, like, it is one of the- it's, it's the funny thing about Final Fantasy XIV is that, as a game, it can very effortlessly... Like, it can effortlessly accommodate both... Like, both, like, a modern suit... You know, a fashion that is obviously completely contemporary and modern... And... Choc chocobo head... Uh, <laughs> and it can accommodate, like, super high fantasy like, wizard shit like this, right? Like, it can it can do the super high fantasy nonsense um, that you expect from a Final Fantasy game, but then it can also turn right around and be, like, uh, be a contemporary fashion show, um, like, straight up. And that's, that's kind of a hard aesthetic line to walk to sort of figure out how to, how to keep those things straight. Ma'am. Um, how to keep those things working aesthetically with each other without looking too ridiculous. Because, like, it would be easy, like, in a game like this, to see someone walking around in, like, like a modern suit and tie or whatever and be like, what the fuck is this? Like, what, like, what, this doesn't fit in here. Like, that it sort of takes you out of it. But Final Fantasy XIV has kind of managed... <clears throat> it's kind of <laughs> I'm surrounded by hot people. This is weird. Um, has kind of managed the the difficult balancing act of like of incorporating that style of fashion. And I think it comes down to the way that, like, even when you look at the fantasy outfits, like you can see elements of modern fashion are in there. Like, for example, the the cool overcoat that this lady is wearing right here. It's the sort of thing that's, like, not too dissimilar, not too far away from what we would consider, like, high fashion or, like, sort of fancy fashion in, in our day and age. Like, the same thing with... Like, so I think there's enough elements of that in the fantasy fashion in Final Fantasy that stuff like this, um, like this wonderful little number right here, like, it doesn't feel incongruous. Like, it doesn't feel like it comes from a completely alternate dimension. Like, it's still obviously distinct, but... It's not completely out of the question. And it's a difficult balancing... Like, if I knew more about fashion, I might be able to, you know... Properly... Is that like a light scythe? Like, is that like a lightsaber, but it's a whole-ass scythe? Jesus Christ. Like, if I knew more about fashion, I might be able to speak sort of more authoritatively on it, but... It's one of the cool things about Final Fantasy XIV, like, the way they've managed it. I still, like... One of the big things that's missing from Final Fantasy XIV is other body types. Like, you are so limited in the kind of presentation you can have. Like, you can be skinny, you can be buff, and that's it. <laughs> like, these are your skinny, buff, and Lalafell. Like, these are your options for how you want to present your body. Uh, there's no such thing as being fat in Final Fantasy XIV, for example. There's no such thing as being... Um, like, pear-shaped? You can't even have a pear shape on a body, which is, like, which is weird, because that's, like, a typically sexualized body type, right? Like, having that, like, like the, the narrow, uh, the narrow torso and then the wide hips, that doesn't exist here. Um, and that's, like, that's one of the big misses with Final Fantasy XIV, which is something, like, which you understand on a production level, right? Like, you understand why, why the artists wouldn't want to have to make every single outfit in the game fit on 14 different body types. That's a huge production ask. But it's also just one of those things that ultimately ends up reinforcing, you know, existing body type ideals in the world and sort of reproducing those same ideologies without really questioning them. This is so cool. There's so many cool people here. Oh my god! 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 Oh my god, it's a Final Fantasy 1 Black Mage. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. Oh my god, look at him wiggle! Look at how he's wiggling! He's wiggling like in the Final Fantasy 1 game, but like they only have two animations like when they walk. I mean, look at that! Look at that little boy! Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's so cool! Oh, I want one. Oh, I want ten. Holy shit! Oh, that rules. That rules so hard. Oh, I love him. Precious little thing. Oh, that's awesome. That's excellent. Hey, tiny mini Fran. Anyway, uh, video game, video game, play the game. Briadine, hey, I found some alley trash for you. Well, 
Let me see what you found. Here, have some trash. What does it say, actually? A large wooden box containing all sorts of detritus gathered from the Colosseum, some of which is still twitching. Okay. Now, what have we here? Ah, yes, a spectacular assortment of innards and entrails, and, uh, oh, what's this? A sack, even more foul-smelling than the gore it was lying in, if that can be believed. And look here, something appears to be written on the side. Sintgoth's, Sintgoth's Sundries. It would seem that this merchant has had dealings with that squishy mass of tentacles. Let us pay a visit to the man and have him enlighten us as to the exact nature of their partnership. Deliver the stinking sack to... Okay. To the Sapphire Exchange! Welcome, welcome! What might a discerning gentleman like yourself be looking for today? Here, have a sack. I'm sorry, sir, but if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. No exchanges, replacement, or refunds. I stand by the quality of my wares and expect customers to do the same. Oh, wait, now where did Ultra send you? I'll be asking the questions here. What exactly did you sell to that ungodly creature? Why, an entire sack full of gold truffles. Can you believe it? What with the impressive price and the uh, uh, distinctive aroma. Uh, they're only for the most discerning of customers, which Mr. Ultra's clearly is, as he just placed another order today. Could these truffles somehow be connected to... Uh, no, I shall stop myself before I start sounding like... Inspect Briandine, it wounds me, wounds me, that you would sneak off to conduct your investigation without me, and to steal away brick here. This gentleman is not impressed. Did you find anything, Inspect? Oh, good gods, what is that dreadful smell? Miss Elia would ex expected a culty young woman like yourself to be more educated in the Epicurean art. That is the most distinct and delightful aroma of the gold truffle. An acquired taste, to be sure, but one that has won the heart of many an Uldan gourmet. I particularly enjoy them slow roasted, as my dear mother makes them. Roasted, you say? Why, my mouth's watering just thinking about it. Might I be so bold as to waste the recipe? It appears the production portion of this. Glory. Wait. It appears the productive portion of this conversation has come to an end. Besides, the tourney is about to begin. Let us make haste back to the Coliseum. <laughs> well, that merchant proved to be a spectacular waste of time. Time, which is in short supply. We must return to the Colosseum before the battles begin. Here's the plan, Brick. I shall find a suitable vantage point to observe Miss Avila in combat. Until I have ascertained the trickery behind her abilities, you are to keep a wide berth of her blade. Understood? Okay. I'm kind of looking forward to fighting her. That seems like it's going to be fun. Back to the Gladiator's Guild! There you are. You're always this close to starting the melee without you. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be remiss not to tell you that there's been a slight change of plans. Another contestant suffered a last minute injury, and none other than our very own Ultras has stepped in to take his place. With everyone's favorite octopus joining in, you two are in the, you're drawing you two in the fray. Spectators are just pouring in, and bookmakers across town are raking in the gill. <laughs> Which ain't a bad thing for us. Word is it that Mr. Fugis himself is quite taken with my promotional skills. Yay, the future is looking quite bright for old Dow Meadow it is. So, what say ya? You? you ready to get your asses kicked? Ha <laughs> Fuck yeah, let me at him. <laughs> ah, that's what I like to hear. Ladies and gents, it is time for blades to whirl and limbs to fly.
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, plutocrats and paupers, open your eyes and steal your stomachs. The Mithril Cup, brought to you by our ever-charitable friends of the Malgina and Sons Mineral Concern, your concern is our concern, is about to begin. And the Final Fantasy theme playing in the background, of course. Who will stand atop the heap of maimed bodies and twisted limbs to claim victory? Will it be the tempestuous of Ela of Amelomiko, Brick the famed warrior Light? Or uh, who is the grinning fool again? Yeah, oh, that's right, Humberbatch, agent of infamy and imbecile extraordinaire. <laughs> Did Briardine pay you to say that? Or will it be our 11th hour entry, Ultras, the eight-legged purple purveyor of pain? <laughs> Here I am! Did you miss me? Brick is me, Goldilocks, yes. <laughs> Aye, I'd say we have a battle for the ages here, folks. Combatants, take your positions and let the battles begin. Do I not get to fight them? Please tell me I get to fight them for real. All right, you know the deal. We team up and wipe out the others. Then it's just when it's just the two of us. I'll take a dive. And you receive your share of the winnings. I have not forgotten our promise. Oh, they're having fun with the animation. Look at Avila's blade spin while well, she's a veritable whirlwind to death and destruction out there. They breed him tough in El Amigo, that's for certain. Come on, let me kick her ass. Come on. You are next. Ladies and gents, once my buddy gets away from these raw truffles, he'll be sneezing up a storm. Literally! <laughs> Wait, is this gonna be... Sneezing up a storm, you say? Oh, of course they'll bring him back. Uh, nothing like the rich aroma of roasted truffles. All this fighting is giving old Colty an appetite. Uh, is it time for dinner yet? Wait a minute, roasted truffles? Brazen is savory sauce, just like Mother used to make them. Feel free to have seconds as a whole sackful where those came from. That meddling muscle head! What's taking him so damned long? The girl's gaze give it us away. Open that gate at once. Maybe the thing that he was trying to summon was on the other side of the... Okay. There he is! There's our boy! Oh, uh, what is that monstrosity? Oh, he's got a face for an ass. Uh, Mr. Typhon, is that you stomach? I hear rumbling. <laughs> Could I interest you in some roasted truffles, perhaps? Typhon is another Final Fantasy VI reference. Uh, Ultros somehow becomes pals with this creature and keeps running around like, yeah, my pal's gonna kick your ass, but then, like, he always kind of fails. It's another comedy bit. What fascinating friends you have, Alty. Why, just look at this charming little nose. Hmm? Is he perhaps suffering from a case of the sniffles? Oh. 
Yep, that's Typhon. <laughs> Typhoon, you see? C could it be? Avila's vaunt to Tempest Plate it was that monster all along? That girl played us all for fools! Whoopsie doopsie! Don't look at me! It was all her idea! I am just a stupid octopus! You were the one who approached me, you double-dealing fiend! I, I just wanted to experience a thrill of battle, you know, for my work and all! Uh, come on, Dower, has Uncle Alti ever lied to you? What did that tell you? I knew there was something f Oh, Jesus Christ, fuck you, dude! About that Alamegan, that word. Okay, fuck off. Go fuck yourself. Fall off, fall in a lake or something, dickhead. Alamegans, pfft. Beggars and brews, the lot of them. We given a home in our lands and this is the thanks we get? Send her to the Gollum Elf all I care, just get her out of my sight before I get sick. Oh good, we're bringing up the racism. But, but I just wanted to, my sister. I feel for the girl, really, my little octopus heart goes out to her, but the rules are the rules, right? And now if Magalalt, you may be so bold. I say, we call off the melee and have the final showdown between the three remaining competitors. That would be me, my buddy Typhon, and Brick here. What do you say, Mr. Warrior of Light? I mean, the comedy kind of went out of it. Yeah, like people are saying in chat, like, wow. Whew. The comedy kind of... Oh, boy. Not so funny all of a sudden. Huh. Oh, that's what we want to see. All trust. All trust. All trust. I'm going to kick all your asses. <laughs> well, this is a most unprecedented turn of events, but who am I to deny the wishes of such a passionate crowd of martial arts aficionados? The venue, Halatali. The fighters, the tag team of Ultras and Typhon versus the Warrior of Light. Who will be left standing when the storm has settled? Be there or miss a battle for the ages. This is a dungeon, so if you need a hand, I can help. Okay, yeah, I might, uh... If there's a dungeon to be had, absolutely. Come join me there. <laughs> Poor Hildebrandt. Seriously, though, fuck these people. Can I not just fight the crowd instead? I want to fight the crowd. So, to review, the truffles were to elicit a sneeze from the octopus's oversized crony, which would be positioned so as to appear was coming from the Alamegan girl's blade, allowing the two to sweep away their opponents with ease. No wonder I wasn't able to see it sooner. It is quite possibly the most imbecilic scheme I've encountered in my years as a consulting inspector. At any rate, we have no choice but to trust in your abilities now, Brick. Let us make for Halatali. A bonk. Well, this tourney's turned into a right mess. With all the trouble I took comparing consolation prices for the melee, it looks like we won't be needing them after all. Of course, as long as you bring in the spectators and the profits, I could give a net's arse. <laughs> no, I know what you're thinking. Two against one ain't fair, especially when one of the two of you is the size of a small house. So here's the deal. Why didn't you bring along some of your friends for the battle? Let's say seven of them. That should even the odds, eh? Well, thank you for the seven friends. Okay. Seems reasonable. Is there anyone here I need to talk to? No. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming that people here are, like here for that, so I'm just gonna hit people with invites and they can say yes if they want. First time I've gone with a full party of pre-mates, <laughs> as it were. Is it me or is Ultras a lot bigger all of a sudden? <laughs> Combatants, the final confrontation will be held here atop the dragon's neck. If all members of the team fall from the platform, they forfeit the match. Let the battle begin. Seafood soup is not on the menu today, kids! Oh, that's hard to keep up with. But we get the classic battle music! I'm gonna turn up the sound a little bit for you guys, because that's... Okay.
Okay. Everyone ready? Don't fall off. Yeah, you don't say. Presumably that's what the sneezes are for. They're like, they'll push you around. And so you have to avoid his AoEs or whatever. Okay, here we go. I need to zoom out. Oh. That's a sneeze. I messed up that rotation. So it looks like Ultras is the one who induces Typhon to sneeze. Is that it? Oh, he sneezes from his ass. I don't like that. That's not good. Keep pointing the same way, dude. Also, keep the other tank up. <laughs> we don't want to lose him. Okay, so Typhon is doing something. Yeah! Okay. So that knocks you out. Okay. Still, Ultros is getting pretty low, so... Is he about to do the big sneeze again? Do we need to get close to him in order to avoid it? Is that it? Apparently not. Okay. How do you block that? Would you stop doing that? Oh, it's a cycling. You have to run around it. I see. It's a damage, it's a zone. I didn't realize that. All right. Uh, well, shit. Okay, I'll just... I'll just throw my axe at you. There we go. That's how you do it. Use arm's length. At least that works for the one thing. Ultras is down. There we go. And Typhon follows. There we go. Warden again. I feel like such a sucker. And Brick claims the Mithril Cup. The victory. I wish I had a better victory pose. <laughs> uh. Oh my god. Oh my god. Need it. 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 I need it. I need it. I need I need to have it. I need to have it. <laughs> I don't mind if I don't get it. Don't worry. It's okay. Um, hey, I got it. Oh. <laughs> That's very kind of y'all. Thank you all very much for helping me with this. Wait, uh... Can I do- is there commendations? No? No commendations? Where do I do that? How do I do that? I can't remember. Okay, I don't think I can. 
That was lovely. I liked that. That was that was like a really nice recreation of of the old uh, of the old boss fight. Good show, Brick. Your performance has earned us front row seats at the awards ceremony. They should afford us the perfect vantage point to thwart the thief. Come, let us return to the Coliseum. It was a battle for the ages, but a worthy victor has risen to claim the spoils. And now, let us take a look at the relic that our champion has won. It's going to be stolen already, isn't it? <laughs> Behold, from the personal vaults of Master Fuyagis himself, the Warden's Grace, a timeless treasure the likes of which our realm has never seen. One that's earned the attention of yours, he is most prominent pilferant. Yeah. <laughs> Ding. Above you. Ladies and gentlemen, inspectors and invertebrates, the opening act dragged on over long. But worry not, the main event is about to begin. Oh, there he is. I know that you paid well for your seats here today, but I can assure you that my performance will not leave you disappointed. Now I invite you one and all to sit back and enjoy the show. Maybe go get, maybe go get the, maybe go get the, the, maybe go get the, maybe go the, the I'll fiend, mark my words, you've stolen your last treasure. I swear it on the Mandeville name. Maybe go get the, yeah, go get the, yeah, hmm. Oh. Oh, it's my boy. I think not, Hildegard. Greg, it is always a pleasure to reunite with old friends, but your timing truly leaves something to be desired. <laughs> Canned laughter, really? Brick! You bested me once, but not today. I shall have my revenge when I pierce your chest with my spear. Do you not mean your skewer? No, my spear! The fucking laugh track? <laughs> Vile thief, is there not a shred of honor in you? Return my weapon at once. Guess where the ring is. <laughs> oh, it seems we have an unexpected guest. I appreciate your enthusiasm, but I fear attendance at today's performance is by invitation only. Raining truffles, but the battle is already. Mr. Uh, Mr. Typhoon, oh, just a moment. I sure I had a tissue here somewhere. <laughs> uh, 
Alas and alack, the ring sails straight into the hands of the fiend. Giving up so soon, are we? That don't sound like the words of a mandible man. <laughs> oh my god, please put pants on my dude! <laughs> but, but, but of course, brilliant, Father. If the ring won't come to me, I shall go to the ring. Why, it'll be just like Dalamud. <laughs> Hildebrand, Helido Maximilian Mandeville. Skyward is only a Mandeville can. Uh, maybe you're going a little too hard. For all you know, not your own strong! <laughs> Look on Brick's face! <laughs> Nine hundred ninety seven, nine hundred ninety eight, nine hundred and ninety. <laughs> the chicken. <laughs> And again, note that they actually have different faces. Like, they're not just a copy-pasted NPC. They're actually designed a little bit differently. These legs, they look strangely familiar. <laughs> Put a little bit too much spin on that one, it seems. Mm -hmm. Not exactly as planned, but who can argue with the results? Say, for one thing, this ring is a fake. But no matter, I have a feeling this will lead me to the true treasure. Until next time, friends, you have been a most attentive audience. The, the, the key, bloody hells. God sees the fiend at once. Someone should really stop him snapping his fingers. <laughs> Your guards suck, man. Uh, it's too late, sir. The second prize, the ring of inquiry, it's gone. The second prize? What's the meaning of this?
Many faced fiend Renal, the man spoke true. A master goldsmith's eyes cannot be deceived. The Sun Sphere is clearly only a second raised replica. Uh, preposterous! It's just, <laughs> it's just the dim lighting. Yes, uh, if you'll just step over here. Have you taken ill, friend? You seem to be perspiring most heavily. Uh, let, let's not be so hasty, friends. <laughs> I, I can explain. I've sold out my honor, joined forces with that odious octopus, all for a false treasure. What a fool I've been. Whatever was I thinking? Oh, do not berate yourself so, Miss Avila. Why, it was exactly as you said, were you not? You were thinking of dear Helgelina, and nothing more. I suppose I wasn't. How do you know my sister's name? Uh, but I assure you, miss, under no circumstances did I tail you to the Nanoa Mines to eavesdrop on your intimately personal dialogue with your beloved sister. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you have the right of it. Blinded by the prospect of fortune and fame, I lost sight of myself and what I was truly fighting for. My honor and my sister's trust will not be easily regained, but I will not shirk from the challenge. Someone could just give her some money, you know? One mystery still remains. Before the thief had identified the ring as fake, he had already acquired the key to the storeroom. Clearly, the second prize, this ring of inquiry, was his target from the start, but why? There must be some pattern to the items the fiend has stolen, a pattern that betrays his true intentions. Why is he so ripped? Like, why is he? The Treaty Blade, Azima's Virtue, the Ring of Inquiry. All relics with quite a history. Or to be more precise, relics from the era of Bildanius. Oh, if that is so, the answer is clear as day. The Fiend means to found Eorzea's greatest museum of Billardian history, pushing up the prizes and gouging honest men out of their hard-earned coin. Doubtless, another one of his cards will appear on the scene to tell us just as much. There we go. That that card is kind of big, isn't it? rules.
I have enjoyed our little game, but all good things must come to an end. I shall claim the four sacred treasures, and justice shall be served. So, this is the thief's final challenge to us, but what are these four treasures of which he speaks? Where the four treasures of Bel Belladia can become one, the wicked shall be judged in the blazing light of sun. Is he gonna awaken an elder god? An old legend. A little more than a fairy tale at that. And yet it seems the Phantom believes there's some truth in these words. Four sacred relics from Belladia. The Warden's Justice? Lofty words coming from a glorified footpad. One who is winning over the common folk by the day, if rumors are to be believed. It would seem the tales of a master thief ruffling the feathers of the rich and famous have won the man more than a few admirers. Yeah, because it's based. Consider his targets so far. An Uldan collector and her hired thugs, a trading mogul in the brass blades, and now a mining magnate in the stone torches. Is it any surprise that the sympathies of ordinary Uldans would lie with the perpetrator rather than his victims? It's almost as though the rich people should maybe, I don't know, spend their money not making poor people not any poor anymore. I don't know. Just a thought. Maybe if instead of being rich, they, like, made sure that people didn't starve or something. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, they'd be popular? I don't know. Just a thought. Just thinking out loud. Jeff Bezos, I'm available for brand consultancy. Astutely observed, Miss Ellie. Our quarry clearly harbors no small degree of resentment for wealth and authority. Might his next target be a member of the Syndicate, perhaps the Sultana herself? Ha ha! Then the is gone for, for the greater the challenge, the higher I rise! <coughs> uh, just one moment, if you would. Mark my words, you have many faces. There's but one man who shall lay claim to the four lost relics of Bellada, and it shall be Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inquisitor extraordinaire. Inspector, rather. Yeah, I'm sure that inspires us all with great confidence. Huh, what was that? <laughs> oh, it couldn't be. Oh, I'm a thinks Godbert needs a new pair of spectacles. No, no, you're right. It was a naked man clad in shadow. <laughs> the only man on the scene more naked than you, Godbert. Oh, hey, 2,000 gil <laughs> for my troubles. It's a rest to recover the four lost relics of Pilatia. As the fiend's true intent, identity and aspirations are revealed. Will Eorzea fall prey to the forces of evil? Or will our hero do what only a Mandeville can? Her last vow. My, my. <laughs> Oh, hey, she's back in her inspector gear. The key to the next case is a mask. Have you ever worn a mask for so long that you forgot what you actually look like? I have. And so, and how do you freeze in midair like that? Talk about a mystery. Oh, well. See you next time. Uh, these quests are just... Like, if the whole game was just quests like this, it would probably not be very good. But it would be funny, and that's almost the same thing. <laughs> so we're going to keep going here on the stream, which you can join on twitch.tv slash tvsguyne whenever I'm recording these things, if you want to. Uh, but if you're on YouTube, I'm afraid the episode ends here. And if you want to watch more Final Fantasy XIV right now, right this second, well, there's an outside chance that some of it is going to be available in the playlist. 
uh, if you are a member of the channel. Anyway, so if, yeah, if you want to see those early before everyone else gets to with editing and all kinds of good stuff from Jane, my editor, uh, you can sign up to be a member of the channel and there's just the early access things there. That's what I want to say. Uh, and if you don't, you don't have to. You can just wait uh, or come along to the streams. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching. Remember to wear a mask and wash your hands still because... I mean, this thing was supposed to be over a while ago, but nope, nope, still, still going. So wash your hands, wear your masks, take your vaccines, and try to act with solidarity towards those who are worse off than yourself. <laughs>